What is going on, all you GBA fans? My name is Under the Radar, and today with me, I have Sam for the pregame predictions. This will be for uh, season two, week one. Sam, say hi, please. Hi. Hello. Okay, so basically, in this video, we're just going to be going over the team matchups what we think will be key players, who we think the MVP will be, and basically whatever we first notice about the uh, the team matchup. Uh, this is all completely opinion-based as well. So if we say that we think so-and-so is going to win by this much, please don't be offended. It's just opinions and it's first glance, and we very well could be wrong, especially me. So with that being said, the first team that uh, the first game that we're going to get into is the San Francisco Arcaniners versus the Houston Gastros and Sam you want to go ahead and uh, go first on this one yeah sure so it's the newbie which is Mike versus George who played in season one of the GBA D League and is uh, he did very well there um, the team matchup to me I think there are some interesting things going on so Mega Aero um, actually looked pretty potent in this match. Uh, there aren't too many things that can take hits on George's team. He does have Uxy, um, but Stone Edge beats his defensive Arcanine if he would want to use that. Um, I guess Milotic might be able to take some hits, but uh, that looks pretty strong. That's one of the first things I saw look strong on, on Mike's team. Um, in terms of the Arcanine's team, he's got some big threats there too. I think that uh, Carmine Uxie actually could be pretty scary. There's mm -hmm. not too much on the gas race that could stop that. And also Landris Eye, rock polish set is always terrifying. So uh, it will be interesting to see what the gas do to try and combat against that. There are a few things that could go specially defensive and try and stop the Landris. Um, but yeah, there are, there are some really... It's, it is an interesting matchup, I think, this one. Um, I like Mega Scizor in this in this match as well. What do you think? What what are the mons that you've one thing that I'm noticing now that I don't think we realized back whenever we were just talking? Special defensive Togekiss could potentially take on uh, Landorus yeah. pretty well. Yeah, Sludge like, Wave will still wave. do a lot. Yeah, Sludge Wave will still do a lot. I I know this because um, I had to think about Landorus Eye against my uh sylveon when i was playing and it did so much damage with sludge wave even like a really bulky sylveon so that's you have crazy. to be careful yeah um my main thoughts are that i think that the gasters could pull out something a little surprising um but it, it's a very cut in it's a very cut and dry type of team like you can't really run many surprises to catch the arcaniners off guard like, say, a Choice Specs Raikou, for example, it outspeeds a majority of his team. Yeah. But actually, I think it outspeeds his entire team, doesn't it? Uh, Yeah, George has got a relatively slow team. It does, yeah. Yeah, so, it like, while that, that could be surprisingly powerful, it's not really something that's not expected. Mm. So, I think, I think that this match could go either way, but I think with Mike's inexperience... I think it's much more of a learning experience than it is a head-on-head -head battle, if you know what I mean. So, I do feel for Mikey because George is a terrifying opponent to oh, go yeah. up against. I know from experience, and being the first battle, I I'm not gonna say that Mikey doesn't stand a chance. I think his team is good. He has mm -hmm. the tools. To and and not only is his team good, but he's a really smart person in general. Yeah. So I'm sure that he could put the puzzle pieces together and be a very 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 good battler in this format i, th I one thing i do think could be really good is nida queen mm -hmm. it it potentially has the coverage and also it could go mixed which i think would be really wise in this kind of match because you could get the ice punch on there for gudra rather than having ice beam while still having earth power for arcanine and i think that could come in real handy in this one yeah i think this will be a very 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 good match but mm -hmm. Who do you think will win and by how much? Okay, so I am going to go George on this one. And I think I'm going to go for maybe a 3-0, which is quite heavy uh, in his favor. But I do think that George is gunning in this one. And I think he wants to start with a bang. So I'm going to say George is going for the 3-0. And 
what do you think the MVP will be of the entire game? It doesn't have to be on the winning person's side, just of the entire game. Who do you think it will be? Well, uh, I I think it's going to be a setup mon on George's side, and I'm gonna say Yuxi. I don't even I don't even know if he's going to bring it, but I think that it could potentially be brought and do a lot of things because I don't see Spiritomb coming. I don't see it coming, so there's not much that would be able to stop a Yuxi. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. Um, for me, honestly, if I had to guess right now, I would probably say, uh, I want to say Mikey, to be honest, because I have a lot of faith in Mikey and I think he'll do really well, but I do have to go with George on this one because he is just such a fantastic battler. And I actually think that the Zapdos will be the MVP. Because I think he'll bring a speedy Zapdos to hurt a lot of his team. Because if he runs it, let's say, Choice Scarfed, Thunderbolt hurts a lot of his team. Like uh, Togekiss. Yeah. I'm sure uh, if he's not especially defensive Mew, it doesn't want to take too many Thunderbolts. And then Mega Arrow, of course. And Darmanitan is frail as all hell. So I think that Zapdos will actually be the MVP of this match. So I actually also think that uh, George will win. Uh, I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll be a 3-0. I really think it'll be a 2-0. Okay. Okay. Um, And then, of course, Zapdos will be the MVP. Yeah. So that is going to be it for the first game. Let's go ahead and hop right into the second game, which will be the uh, Stantlers versus the Buffalant Bills who is Makati versus Ellie. Do you want to take this one first? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm really good friends with Ellie, so I, I kind of know how she went into the team building. And it's no surprise that she has absolutely nothing for Excadrill. Excadrill, two AKOs or Okos, her entire team. So um, I think that the biggest thing for her to overcome is just figuring out a way to take out Excadrill. But... Mm -hmm. Outside of that, her team matches up really freaking well. Roserade is really, really good against her team, uh, Will's team. And then I could also see Sand Slash being a very, very good Mon to use in this game because of Sand. She could run Choice Scarf Sand Rush and outspeed the Excadrill and then bop it real quick with an Earthquake. So there's, there's a couple things that I could definitely see Ellie doing. It's just the matchup is really, really, really not in her favor all because yeah. of the sand core i agree i think that I, I i do really like roserade in this matchup as well and uh, as much as i criticize sand slash being a pick um in the draft analysis this is the one match where it really might pay dividends because uh it it will get the sand rush if if uh the bills do bring hippowdon and excadrill so that could be really interesting the issue is that uh, he has a number of switch-ins on an Earthquake and probably will see the Scarf coming. Exodrill does an Oko Sand Slash anyway, even if it's an offensive Sand Slash. So I doubt he would stay in. Um, but yeah, Ellie's team, interestingly, has loads of things that can use Sand to its advantage. Like Heliolisk gets Sand Veil, Sand Slash gets Sand Rush, Sigilith gets, uh, is Magic Guard, so it, it won't take the damage. And Regirock gets a special defense boost. And I think Regirock could do really well in this match because of that special defense boost. And it will be able to take on things like Mega Manectric a bit better. Um, but yeah, as you say, Excadrill is going to be the big problem. If I was playing it, I might consider things like fully defensive Latias. I think that that is able to switch in on the next good drill yeah that um, takes an iron head just not with the sand and stealth rocks yeah not with stealth rocks it wouldn't but mm -hmm. um but yeah that was one thing i would consider uh outside of suns she stands a better chance but mm -hmm. it's gonna be tough and unfortunately i don't think mega save Eye will be too much use this matchup uh although keeping away rocks could be really important but yeah. i don't think it's gonna it doesn't seem like um umbreon and gramble both really wall it quite well or just stop it from being able to do anything so i think that's an issue there Makati, um, the oh i'm sorry go ahead no uh well i was just gonna say that 
that he's uh, yeah McCarty's got a number of other things that he could use that are really potent here as well he's got a lot of scary things I would probably go with main nature and crowbat just for some vault turn to get the sand up and then to get into your sand sweeper because that's really where the damage is going to come so uh, and yeah, Azelf because Azelf is pretty speedy too outspeeds a majority yeah. of I th actually I think it outspeeds all of Ellie's team yeah it does yeah um, the one thing that I don't think I realized until just now is that Swords Dance Scizor actually does a very, very good chunk to a lot of her team outside of, like, Crobat and Hippo, which if she can wither those down, that can't even really take a plus two bug bite or a plus two knockoff. Main trick will stop that, though. Intimidate yeah. mean that Bullet Punch won't do anything and, he's got, and he'll have a fire-type coverage move, so yeah. I don't think there'll be a sweep coming there. But no, there, it, there won't be a sweep coming from either way. That's the yeah. only thing. I would have thought that Banded at Sizzle might be better in this matchup just to get some powerful U turns and get some mm -hmm. momentum herself. I think that might be better. Yeah. And have a powerful superpower as well for Excadrill. Well, it will kill Excadrill or whatever. It's a superpower for Yeah. Excadrill. Yeah. I also, uh, you also. You also mentioned Xcloud before. I think Xcloud, yeah, there aren't really many switches in to x on the stand list. She can bring Floor just if she wants, but uh, that's maybe a free switch into either Crobat or Excadrill, and Excadrill you don't want to give free switch-ins to, so that's a problem. Yeah, and and honestly, an Expert Belt x just can carry the perfect coverage, like Shadow Ball, Psychic, Ice Beam, Boom Burst. Well, pro Boom Burst would probably do even 40%, especially defensive Floor just... Um, yeah with uh like max special defense you know just yeah. because it's a freaking boom burst there's not really anything that you wouldn't want to boom burst on that team apart from red rock so you just surf that but i think everything takes more damage from boom burst yeah but with all that being said i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna say that i think makati will win uh i'm gonna say 3-0 I'm going to say solid 3-0, and I really do think that Excadrill will be the MVP of the entire game just because it's it's a monster in this format. Now, I think this one's going to be a tricky one to call just because Ellie has the knack of finding the one random thing to scupper the plans. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a hard one to call. I, I'm also a big fan of the Stantless draft. I really like that draft a lot. I just like uh, Ellie a lot. I like the way, I like her battling style. I like the way she yeah. looks into team building. I it's love different. the way. It's quite refreshing the way she does it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but I I do feel like the, the extra drill matchup is not good and it's not in Ellie's favor here. And also the fact that uh, Mega Man Electric is actually a really good matchup as well. Seeing as though Sand Slash is her only immunity, I think. Is that right? Uh, which probably is coming this time, yeah. but it, I would maybe go offensive, so you don't want to be switching in on Hidden Power Isis. Uh, so I feel like there's just a bit too much on Will's side. So I'm, I, wa I want to think it's going to be a great match, and I'm going to go 1-0 to the Bills. Okay, okay. That's... And I think I think that the uh, the thing that's going to put in most work, it might be Mega Main Electric, just because... Ellie doesn't have too many safe switches. There's, there are things like Rose Array that can take it, and Floor just maybe, but they are free switches into bigger threats. So I think Mega Man X is actually going to put in a lot of work. I think it's kind of funny, though, because the one thing that does a lot of work in almost every single game is Infernape in a lot of battles. And yeah. I think this might be the one battle where it does absolutely nothing or it doesn't even either come. that or it comes with a choice banded mac punch that takes out excadrill the biggest threat yeah that's the thing that's it true. does have it does have the, that's the thing that will check the excadrill so it's got an important role to play but he's got the crowbat he's got slow bro and bramble and things that can definitely switch in and take it on so. and the only bad thing about that is that it's not something that you can be like okay excadrill's in let me go ahead and switch in because you'll die to an earthquake it's kind of I have yeah. to get a slow U-turn or volt switch off, and then or or sack something, yeah. and that's just that's no fun. But I think we're gonna go ahead and hop into the next team, and that is the New York Shelmets and Super Gassy versus the Washington Blazikins and Mighty Mammoth Swine. Baby Nick, baby Nick. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, 
I, I criticized quite heavily. Well, not not too heavily. I mean, Gassy's draft, I wasn't a massive fan of just because there were lots of dragons and a lot of common weaknesses, which I don't particularly like. And one of the biggest weaknesses this team has is to Mamoswine, which we did say in the draft analysis, Mamoswine destroys this team. So yep. that's the main thing that I'm going to be focusing in on here. Like, there's nothing that can take the hits unless you've got a defensive Manaphy that's potentially the only thing i think blissey can that take hits i don't think it can it can yeah. carry superpowers so yeah. i don't think i don't think it can take the hits and really can even Re-Nicolas. take hits because of knockoff, knockoff. Yeah. yeah so mama swine really really puts in work this match i wouldn't even put just rocks on it i'd, I'd leave that to skarmory i would just have a fully offensive mama swine uh with a life orb and i think it's going to put in so much work uh there are other threats on the blaziken's team but honestly i don't really think that anything will live up to mama swine i think mama swine is going to destroy the shelmets do have some tools though you were you were a big advocate of mega amphorous weren't you yes i think that i i'm actually on the complete opposite side of the spectrum that sam is i think that while mama swine destroys uh Gassy's team, I think Mega Amphros could do a lot to the Blaziken's team. If he ran like physically defensive and just ran coverage moves, he could re- he could get so much chip damage off and just make it easier for say uh Latios or Manaphy to come in and sweep late game. Because he really doesn't have a whole whole lot for it once he's physically defensive. Yeah, he has Mammoth Swine with EQ, but he like Venusaur with EQ won't take it out because it's not stab and he won't be maxed he won't be max attack that's I would I'd be willing to bet money on that and then Entei with Bulldoze does a lot but he can't Sacred Fire because it's resisted it I think that Mega Amphros will do a lot of work this game I think it'll be a surprise a surprising Pokemon that does a lot of work with hidden power grass for that gastrodon yes with that's hidden power grass for the gastrodon uh we we were also kind of thinking because of mold breaker hp ice on venusaur because it'll be super effective but dragon pulse actually just does more if i'm not mistaken correct yeah yeah dragon pulse would do more yep. so it's just... the, the one the other thing that we were saying about was the potential of a trick room which could work quite nicely in this one yep as the shelmets have a lot of uh slower pokemon later on in their draft and mega amphros would really appreciate that in this matchup so that could be something that an interesting thing that would definitely turn the tides of the match and i would probably consider it if i was if i was playing with that team uh the only could do uh, i'm sorry i finished what you were saying i, I hate yeah we, i was just going to say reunicus would do quite well in this matchup really if you do get a trick room and it's a life orb it, it actually puts in a lot of work against yeah. that team the only bad thing about mega amphros is the fact that he has two immunities in Manectric and Mamoswine, so we can just freely click Thunderbolt until both no, main, of them are doesn't resist with Mole Breaker. Oh, I mean, it's, right. doesn't, it's not immune. That's right, Mold Lightning Mold Rod. Um, that's yeah. right, I didn't even think about that. So it's only the Mamoswine, and yep. that's so good that you don't really want to be risking it as a switch, and I wouldn't have thought. Yep. Because if, ca- if it catches the Focus Blast and just goes down, then that is so much momentum in terms of the Shelmet side. So uh, Amphoros is going to cause problems. It's going to cause problems. Yeah, I think I, I think that Mamoswine and I think Mamoswine will be the overall MVP to be honest. But I'm really hoping that Mega Amphoros does it more. But yeah. that's just me. So who do you think will win this battle? I think uh, that it's going to be a win for the Blazekins, and I think it's going to be uh, probably. A, 4-0 maybe wow. if Mama Swine really gets its act together I think it really could be that landslide wow that's crazy I think it's going to be a 3-0 for uh, Super Gassy honestly right. I really think that it'll it's all about it's all about those big win conditions whichever one goes down um, it's it's not going to be their game so uh, if if Nick plays recklessly and just tries to Earthquake and Ampharos, which can take it and Focus Blast, then that's not going to be good, good news. But if Ampharos goes down early, um, then that's not going to be good news for the Shelmets either. The one good thing is that he doesn't have to click EQ. He can click Icicle Crash because it's still yeah. super effective. Still and stab. So much of the team, yeah. And it hits Tornado Therian, which is very obvious for the EQ switch in. 
Yeah. But so you think uh, Mamo Swan's going to be the MVP? Mamo Swan's MVP. Yeah, Mamo Swan is MVP. Okay. Well, I think uh, I think that uh, Ampharos will be the MVP. Yeah, I think that's a good call. I like I like to. Yeah, I like the uh, contrast there. Amphro- yeah. I'd love to see Amphros put in a load of work. It would be amazing. And I, I, it's one of my favorite megas. Me too. It, it's, I just, I just love the way it can be used because it doesn't have to be fully offensive or fully defensive. It's, you can. Yeah. Run... It's got such high special attack that you can run, you can invest in bulk and still hit like a truck. Exactly. But I think we're gonna hop into the final battle for this week, and that is Hardy and the Miami Dolphinions versus Gearheart and the Seattle Star Raptors. And uh, I think I'm probably gonna make some very uh, weird calls, to be honest. That I think a lot of people are probably gonna criticize me for, but I don't even care. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm actually in love with Hardy's matchup versus Gearhart's because I think that Nido King destroys Gearheart's team more than I think it does anybody else's team. I think that Weavile hurts his team so much, and on top of that, so does Mega Metacham. So those three are just very, very potent threats that I think yeah. will give Gearheart a really, a really hard time. Yeah. But. I I, I want to say, so when I when we did the analysis, the Dolphinions did come in for some stick with their analysis. I want to uh, just say how awesome the weavile mega metatam core is because mega metatam is walled by psychic types and weavile killed psychic types that is the case in this matchup if weavile is able to get rid of victini mega metatam is going to be a massive threat huge threat the yep. fable could take the high jump kick but it doesn't take the psychic type moves very nicely or the bullet punches or whatever you want to put on i wouldn't i i personally wouldn't run bullet punch just because i think it's quite weak and you can run psychic stab which would do more and you're outspeeding the fable anyway there's not really anything that's faster that you'd want to hit with a bullet punch maybe the low funny but i don't know i re- i do like uh the meditam in this match it it does put in the work the things that the dolphinians have to be scared of is that it's the victini but if you can re- if you can pursuit trap that with with weavile which is quite easy after a v create drop to speed yep. and to defense uh then they're gonna have a lot a much easier time salamence is checked by weavile uh Clefable could be quite hard to kill but you said nider king is a great match matchup in this in yep. this case i'm actually rooting for the dolphinions this match which i i don't know i just think the matchup as you say is great and i've come to realize how awesome weavile and mega Metatam combo is i i actually really like those picks now and i wish that i had uh emphasized that a bit more in the draft analysis video yeah, and there's another thing that I picked up on that's kind of minor, but I think is noteworthy, is the fact that Basculin was probably the one Pokemon that got a lot of heat in a lot of the analysis videos. But if he runs Choice Banded Adamant Aqua Jet, it does a lot to a lot of his team outside outside of like the Rotom and the um uh the Dragonite. It does a lot. Like it Oko's uh Nido King, it Oko's um Archaeops, it does a lot to Mega Metacham and a Weavile. It does a lot to, I think, it Oko's um, Raichu as well. So I, th- I mean, with the Nida King, you will outspeed anyway, so you can just click the Waterfall, which is even more powerful. Yeah, I I agree. Depends, that the only reason why I said Aqua Jet for that thing is because if it's Choice Scarfed. You yeah, don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really like it Choice Scarfed in this. I think, uh, 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 of course, though, if you want it to Ice Beam Salamence, but or maybe Earth Power Victini, but then. Vitini is probably V-creating and getting slower. Salamence is checked by Weavile anyway. Tentacle, yeah. I suppose, could be faster, but if it's defensive, then you should outspeed that too. I would probably run Life Orb because you do want that extra power, really. To, to be killing things like Registeel. Registeel is so bulky. Uh, you want to be running power. Um, but, but yeah, Baskelin could be a threat. And the other thing to mention is that Rotom, if it's, taking, if it's getting smashed by V-creates, then having extra pressure on it with Basculin is only going to help uh, the Star Raptors try and break through. Yeah. I really, really think that speed control is going to be very important on both sides because they both have two immunities and it just, I think it really, really, really comes down to who can get speed control first and who can get chip damage off first. Because if, yeah. if Gearheart, Thunder Waves, the Weavile, Mega Metacham, and the Dragonite, I think... Wait, uh, I'm sorry, the Dolphinians have three immunities. My fault. Uh, but if you can Thunder Wave those and then can get a lot of power off with Crook, I think I think that Gearheart could pull it out. But if 
uh, Hardy Thunder Waves a lot with Rotom Heat, or Rotom uh, Wash, I'm sorry, and like Thunder Waves, the Salamence, the Victini, the Mega Lop, and the Yon Mega. Like, I think that could, I think that could do a lot. So yeah, Meg- Megalop is is uh, pretty scary in yep. this matchup. I think that that's something that could definitely turn the tides because it will be getting chipped with fake outs or whatever, or just returns if things are switching in. Um, so that's going to be hard for the Dolphin Eels to handle. I would I would go as far as to say that's the biggest threat and the hardest thing for them to deal with. Yeah, especially if uh, Gearheart gets up rocks. Uh, what defoggers? Oh, he has him on top for rapid spin. My fault. Never mind. Yeah. Um, but if he gets up rocks, uh, Dragonite can't even take a nice punch because the Marvel Skull will be broken. But mm. <sighs> okay, who do you think is gonna win this one? I just this one I find quite hard to call. I do find it quite hard to call. I think I'm actually gonna go with Dolphinian. So I want to see that me- uh, that Weavile Mega Medicham combo work. So I'm gonna root for them. But I think it's going to be a scrappy match, and I think that it's going to be close. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say two zero. I'm going to say two zero. Two zero. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to agree with you with even the two zero. I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be a very, very close match. Uh, but I think that Hardy will end up pulling it out because that Weavile Mega Meta Cham Core along with Nido King just does so much work this game. Mm-hmm. And. Who do you think uh, will be the MVP? MVP. Well, this one's a tough one mm-hmm. because I'm I'm inclined to say Megalopony. I think that will put in the most work. It's 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 either of the Megas. It's either Megalopony or Mega Medicham. I'm gonna say Megalopony because it's gonna be so hard to deal with. It's gonna be really hard to deal with. See, I think I'm gonna have to go with Nido King on this one because Nido oh, King just true. destroys so much mm-hmm. of Gearheart's team, but. I think it'll be a very good battle. Mm. But with that, that is the conclusion of the Season 2 Week 1 pre-game predictions video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you leave a like before you go. Also, make sure you check out all of the links in the description. We'll have the GBA Twitter. We'll have all the coaches' Twitter we'll, and their channels. Like We'll have everything down there, so please make sure you go check it out. Anything you want to say to uh, leave us off, Sam? Um, yeah, please do that. And if you disagree with us on any points or you think that we've missed something glaringly obvious, let us know in the comments section um, because it's always a good uh, discussion point to see what you guys think as well. Yeah, definitely. But once again, thank you all very much for coming out and I will see you guys in the next pre-game predictions video. Bye. Bye.